Hello everyone, I'm Paolo from Zurich Instruments. Today we're going to explore the Lab1 oscilloscope and its capabilities. Every Zurich Instruments device is capable of displaying and recording the signal at the fast voltage and current inputs through the Lab1 oscilloscope. The vertical resolution, sampling rate and bandwidth depend on the model. 16-bit and 5 MHz for the MF series, 14 bits and 50 MHz for the HF2 series, 12 bits and 600 MHz for the UHF series. Let's provide a signal to the instrument input and open the scope tab in the Lab1 user interface. Other than the ones at the fast inputs, the scope can also display other signals, such as those at the auxiliary inputs, triggers, arithmetic units, etc. For this tutorial, we select input 1 as our source. We then set the input range with the auto range button in the lock in tab to make the best use of the input ADC. Turning on the scope, the waveform is displayed in the plot area. Let's move to the Trigger tab to define a trigger. We have a wide selection of possible sources. In this example, we will trigger on the displayed signal, so we choose input 1 here as well, and enable the triggering. The green dot on top indicates actual triggering. The trigger level can be easily adjusted with the mouse once the graphical representation is switched on. The grey area indicates the hysteresis, which is the minimum signal deviation from the trigger point required to rearm the trigger. We can also analyze the data in the frequency domain. Rather than choosing one or the other, let's open a new instance of the scope window by dragging its icon in the other row, and then choose the spectral domain view. Now we can see both views at the same time. The resolution of both views can be controlled by the number of points and by the scope sampling rate. The number of points can be selected here, and it affects both time and frequency domain in the same way. While the sampling rate can be selected here, we can decrease the sampling rate to increase the frequency domain resolution, but we do need to keep it at least twice as large as the highest frequency component to avoid aliasing effects. We can see the current frequency resolution in the advanced tab. Of course, decreasing the sampling rate has the opposite effect on the time domain, decreasing the resolution. As with the spectrum analyzer, you can choose to have the scope also display the power or spectral density of the signal. In case the analyzed signal is noisy, we can enable averaging. As with all the plot tools in Lab1, the oscilloscope also benefits from several mathematical functions located in the Math tab. In the frequency domain, we can use the peak finder to locate and track the peaks in real time. While in the time domain, functions such as the histogram, cursor location or area provide plenty of extra information on the waveform. The area tools, for instance, can give you at a glance values such as the DC offset or signal average, its minimum, its maximum, and so on. For the MF and UHF series, the digitizer upgrade extends the scope's functionality with the ability to display two traces at the same time, for instance current and voltage on the MFLI, trigger gating and shot acquisition, and a much larger maximum number of points. The latter, for instance, allows the scope in the UHF series to have a maximum resolution of around 10 Hz over the full bandwidth of 600 MHz. I hope this video gave you a good overview of the Lab1 oscilloscope and showed you how it can be useful within the Lab1 toolset. Thanks for watching.